call the meeting to order at 6.02 and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance of Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, Brittany, missed a word. It threw me. <laughs> had a lot going through my head at that moment. <laughs> I do know the pledge, I swear. Um, <laughs> some people up over there. The no, but you can you certainly can, oh. have mine. Okay. Oh, okay. Are you, you sure? You yeah, that's fine. Well. Okay. Um, I <clears> usually <throat> printed and was not home. Um, I'm going to mark it up. Okay. Um, so, do we have any changes? Or additions to the agenda? None for me. Okay. Um, so, uh, did everybody see and was able to read? I guess I just talked to you guys because, like, the only one's been here. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you guys read the minutes? Yes. <laughs> okay. Do we have any? Uh, or does somebody want to make a motion? I would make a motion that we approve the minutes. Okay. I will second the motion. Awesome. Um, do you have any changes or? I do not. Comments? Okay, so all those in favor of approving the minutes of September 16th, 2019? Aye. Aye. Okay, abstentions? Nays? Nothing. Okay. Um, and public. Hey. Hello. You look like you're press. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what is my standard? <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> um, and I assume you are just here to listen. Yeah. yeah, okay, great. We'll make sure we're not going to miss any of your participation. <coughs> um, okay. Uh, so, budgeting discussion. Christine, are you leading this one? Well, um, I don't know. Okay. I can. I mean, I think between the two of us, we can. I can. Sure. Um, it's we're preliminarily looking at the budget. I met with Ed last week. Um, he's sending. Uh, the wage and benefit sheet. That's okay. the first step for me to check over to make sure. That so we haven't seen that yet. Um, he's working on that. He, okay. he and then he's sending uh, the budget for um, to me so I can make re revisions in each line item. But he hasn't done that yet. So okay. So we don't know what the wage <laughs> differential was between. Well, the I did <coughs> ask him about that, and um, we thought. He thought it was around 60, 65. Okay. okay. Um, as a rough estimate. Okay. Between what we budgeted for and what we're actually spending this year. <coughs> so and some of it, some of it in the new system, he can encumber funds now, so he can kind of gauge. Okay. Um, but when I was just looking at, um, Tina had sent me a preliminary uh, wage and benefit sheet just to glance over, and she was missing some people. So I don't know how accurate that is. Okay. Gotcha. But. <coughs> There is some. There yeah. Is some. And, yeah. and that was yeah. 60 to 65 over what we had budgeted. No, under. In, no, under. under. Oh, okay. In the wage <laughs> line, because we hired in some people at lower at a lower yeah. cost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you get a chance to run high school numbers yet? No? I, I ran, well, I gave them to Ed, and what I have is... Yes, I just have to get to it. It's one of these papers. Um, so we're sending it, we're, we are graduating. Oh, I just wrote it down, where did it go? Nope, maybe I don't have it. Okay. I believe it was around, um, <coughs> we're sending 27. Oh my gosh, that's tiny. Our eighth grade class is pretty small. Okay. And we're graduating 36, no, I do have it, 36 seniors. Okay. So, so nine, nine, a difference kids. of nine kids, yeah. If we don't get any newcomers. Correct. Which we do have a newcomer already, so. <laughs> oh, just so you know, <laughs> we had a high school move in this year. Oh, okay. That we didn't budget for. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So I've sent it all to Ed. Uh, Jean's done preliminary like 
where kids are going to high school. Okay. Um, so we have that data, but uh, it has to be plugged into the into the budget. Yeah. Like which that. which he's really working on the SU budget right now. Right. Um, the goal after I spoke with him last week was for him to get that those spreadsheets to us, and then David and I and Ed have a meeting the week of actually on Halloween on the thirty first. Okay. So that. So we'll know more then. So we'll know more at the November meeting. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like, from a budgeting standpoint, we have fewer high schoolers yes. and our wages <coughs> and benefits are lower because of our, our hires. Our new yeah. hires. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so those are good news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes. Okay. And um, the staff is, you know, we've sent out. Um, We've asked the staff for what they think they might need in addition to what they normally get. Mm -hmm. And those are coming in. Okay. So I shared the STEAM one with you. Yeah, yeah, so um, um, Christine had shared that the uh, STEAM wanted a little bit extra. Um, and then, I don't have that number. Oh, well, I do have that number on me. It's a big one. It was a big one. Yep. Yeah, so so the request was for 22, okay. Um, but there were some, that were higher requests and lower requests, and some of this is already in the right. library budget. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was also the potential for leader in me. Yep. Training. Yep. And would that be this year? We try no. to squeeze it. That would be It'd in the be next, next year's year. Budget. Yeah. So It'd be next um, year. So that's another 10k. Um, we didn't budget for busing for algebra, right? We did not budget for busing for algebra and the SRO right. and. Um, there's some other, like the laminator and the shredder are about to <laughs> leave those us. Those things happen. <laughs> <laughs> and those things are very important. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not yeah. huge costs, but they are additional costs. So. Okay. Um, and then there was also the big picture school. Yep, that that's being grant funded at the moment. Okay, so. Um, and uh, Jim had estimated 18k to move the offices. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So these are. I'm just like kind of throwing yeah, things no, out no, there, so you guys kind of know some of the um, stuff that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and those all plug in as soon as Ed sends me the spreadsheet. I'll put all of those numbers in. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that, this is just good to, to know some of the things that are hanging out yep. there. Um, and then, yeah, I'm trying to look that through. Um, and the other one is um, moving forward on getting this building committee put together. Um, because with our new, um, with our new cafeteria service um, and the scheduling challenges that we've had, um, it, and Christine and I have talked. <laughs> Um, we'd always moved forward with this idea of building a new gym, but um, we talked about, you know, maybe we should look at a new cafeteria that's right there attached to the kitchen, so you wouldn't have to change that, but it's a smaller facility than a gym. Mm -hmm. And then you get rid of the cafe gymatorium and you have less conflict. And so I think... Has there been has there been anything new? I just that it wasn't on my radar. That no, there was a problem with that. Uh, oh, oh, scheduling it's a, it's a huge the gym scheduling night gym awesome. in the cafeteria. Yeah, during, yeah. So that's like been during lunch and PE classes. That was right. Jeff's biggest beef too. He it's hard. It's hard to do. That. It's hard to have class when lunch is going on because it's very noisy. It's loud, as it right. Yeah. And then we've got. Um, we have two gym teachers and they can share the gym sometimes it's not ideal yeah. and they do um, this year have to share the space um, certain days of the week so there's two gym classes going on in each half of the gym right. until we have to set up for lunch which takes um, a good 30 minutes 45 minutes and then the cleanup after lunch is another 40 35 to 40 minutes on a Good day. So if you simply had tables in a nice cafeteria setting yeah. Yeah. that were we permanently the set up. We just have a room with <laughs> yeah. tables. Yeah. <laughs> a, room so with, great. a room with tables yes. 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 and windows. 
Yes. Yeah. That would give you back. Sounds like it would give you back like four hours, or it yeah, would be yeah. substantial. Yeah. yeah. The gym could be used all day. So yeah. we don't. We we've scheduled it this year because the PE teachers requested no <coughs> PE during lunch. So that's every day. You know, an hour and a half, and then the cleanup and the. They can yeah. be. They can use one half during the setup and the cleanup. Um, but it's only but half. It's only half. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Space is a problem. It, yeah, <laughs> we well, struggle. The basketball play yeah. conflict is the other yeah. one yep. that um, mm -hmm. is a, something to think about. Yeah, yeah, and maybe that's why we're thinking about gym space. space. Yeah, maybe that's why the, the proposed new gym was always. Right, so, the, the so that we could actually have sort of an auditorium. Right. Something that's <coughs> more of a dedicated yeah. auditorium. Yeah. yeah. So we talked about that briefly. Yeah. And, and put it, uh, but we need a but building committee. But we need a building committee. committee right. We need to review yeah. the previous reports and yeah. kind of come up to speed with where we are. Did I miss some of the details about that STEAM, re STEM request? Like you, what, I haven't shared them yet. I haven't shared them yet. Okay. Um, this I just wonder what might be in it. So I can oh, share it um, with you. Yeah. Here, you can oh, you've got I it. I can just read it. Um, oh, 22K was just STEAM? So library and STEAM. Library and STEAM. Library and STEAM. Yeah. So the library budget, which a lot of this is already in there, but I think there is some new... She like, has about, I want to say, 75 oh, or okay. 7,900 in the library budget currently. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but she's she's um, wants to bring robotics coding um, we you know as I said I think I've said in the past the passion projects that kids are working on they need supplies um, so she's budgeted a little bit for that circuits and supplies the laser cutter is um, a, a, a wish she could live without that which is a good um, chunk of chunk of that budget but um, if we want to grow this program which we do it'd be great to be able to support her mm -hmm. She's I'm not sure it. I understand the the names there, but mm -hmm. um, we didn't share this. Oh, okay. This was just something Christine. Yeah, Christine she just gave this to for me, me a yep. while ago, oh, and um, we were just talking about kind of big picture stuff that we have coming down the pipe okay. for budgeting. We'll keep it general. Um, yeah, we're right. yeah we're and right. um, we will get into the details once we. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Ed's really focusing on the SU budget right right now. That has Makes to go. Sense. That has to be done first, and then he moves to the local level. Yeah. Um, but what you so. did miss is that uh, we're um, Christine remembers that wages and benefits are about 65k lower than last year um, because we had some um, 68. I wrote it down. Oh, sorry, oh, 68. 68. Okay, yeah. there we go. Sorry about that. Um, are lower because of the change in um, seniority between staffing members with retirements and people. The leaving. new hires. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we're sending. We're um, we're expecting to send nine less high school students left next year, so that's a good thing too. But we still have a big high school population. Yeah, we do. Um, compared to what's coming in, we are. Um, she did say. I do know that the um, initial um, plans include. I think just one Hanover. The rest of them are m m mostly Hartford, Bedford, Bedford Windsor, but one Hanover. Okay. Is the nine students this year's eighth graders or next year's? No, there are nine fewer eighth graders than, um, than, than the seniors. seniors. So we're sending 27, graduating. graduating 36 yeah. gotcha. seniors. So there's a cost savings um, there. Yeah. Of the group now, not the... We're not losing of kids, the we're graduating them. The, um, it's not the 7th graders, it's the 8th graders. It's the 8th graders. Yes, yes. The 7th yes. 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 grade are, class will be bigger again, though. So yes, that's important it will. to know. I mean, we it's can't get to. Right. Okay. Okay. It's about 40. Yeah, yeah they're two, a big I class. Think. Yeah. I think there's a big class. They must be juniors big, right now. Yeah, they're juniors. Juniors are a big class. Oh, the seniors were a big class too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 36. But the like juniors were the biggest. Juniors were the biggest, biggest class. class. Yeah. So 36 had in a while. Graduating 17 going to Hanover. I guess. According oh, to Linda. 17 Linda. of those 36 graduating That's were at Hanover. Yes. Oh, wow. yeah. Gosh, yeah, I I oh you know what? No, I don't think so. No. It's Hartford. She wrote Hanover, but it's not. It's Hartford. There's probably 15. 
At one at Hanover. Hanover. One, one from senior the class. Senior class. One. Senior class. Yeah, 17 Hartford, not Hanover. She had that work. She had that mixed up. But it's still a, um, a different a difference. Yeah. 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 Um, and we'll project. We looked at all those projections and stuff yeah. last year when we were doing yeah. projecting. We just we're in the tentative. Mm -hmm. We're in the tentative. Yes. We're <laughs> the thinking about it. Um, so, uh, and then I think going forward, we'll want to talk about if we want to do any programmatic changes, and we haven't mm -hmm. done any budgeting on that yet. Right. Um, um, so, uh, the updates testing results. I, I think that was, I almost emailed, is that bringing the data to the staff that I brought to you last time? Because you, you, sh you showed I us shared. the yes. data of the last yes. meeting. That's what I thought it was. Um, and I did do that, so I can so share with you. Um, um, let me just plug I, in. I'm skipping over radar list because that's, that's going to okay. involve discussion. And I feel like this might be shorter. <laughs> so and we got a good update. Yeah, we got a yeah. Okay. That's why. Let me just plug this in. So uh, I did bring the data to the staff last week I believe at the staff meeting or two weeks ago yeah um, so we have a, a monthly staff meeting in other meetings but they're for other purposes and <coughs> when I met with well first I brought it to the leadership team <coughs> And when we look at that data, it's it's overwhelming. It's it's a large amount of data to kind of break down in a 30-minute time period. Mm -hmm. So, we actually went into uh, Air Assist. It's called within Smarter Balanced. I think it's within Smarter Balanced. Airways. Airways. Vermont and they yeah. And we cool. broke it. We broke the data down a little bit. Um, so that's off now. I think. <laughs> Now it's working. Now it's working. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so while well, it comes on, I can explain to you. So the K um, K three teachers looked at um, the SBAC kind of big picture stuff just to look for trends because they don't. It, third grade takes S back, but those students are now in fourth grade. So the fourth grade teachers looked at the third grade tests. Um, and so the K3 teachers and uh, some of the related <coughs> arts teachers looked at the kind of global data that I shared with you. And they noticed, kind of what we noticed, that we are not closing the gap in gender, free and reduced, and um, special education. So they didn't have one specific strategy to close that gap, but they did suggest that we um, look at our current curriculum materials to see if they're actually doing what we're hoping that they're doing. And then looking at, um, with Angie, the interventionists are looking at piloting some different um, testing materials. We are, our contract with Track My Progress is up this year, and there are some better mm -hmm. online systems out there that can be used for benchmarking and then progress monitoring and some that give you um, that break your kids down into groups and there's online components if you'd like so we are doing fit which is focused um, instruction time at all the grade levels and part of the struggle with that is we don't have enough staff to work with the smaller groups that that um, brings about when you're um, working with kids specifically on their targeted needs. So this would give them um, a tool to use with particular students. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to pilot iReady and Exact Path, I believe. Is that correct, Angie? Yes. Um, so Angie's working on that. So. Well, we're not. We're just in the sandbox right now. Right, we yeah. meet at the end of the week. We have a process that we're going to be going through and hopefully running a trial for a for a at least a meteor length of time mm -hmm. where it's real time we're getting real data and really seeing how the programs fit our needs mm -hmm. um so so then the um 
MTSS leadership team wanted to just give teachers a little bit more um, data that would inform their instruction. So we broke down the claims. We went into um, SBAC data and broke down by claims for grade levels so that the teachers could see kind of um, more specifically where the breakdowns are mm -hmm. and then set some goals around where they see the biggest biggest um, challenges for kids. So they had some questions to answer. I didn't put them all on here, but for fourth grade, um, they looked at ELA and math and determined that math concepts and procedures is the area of most concern for that, that group of students. And so that's what the claim they're going to work on generally. And um, they're going to, Beth last year as a math coach um, created target areas <coughs> to work on um, in relation to the interim SBAC assessment. So they're going to use that information to guide their instruction mm -hmm. in the classroom. Uh, those are the claims. Um, and those are the target areas, in case you wanted to see them. I included them in here. So the same for, this was fifth grade. And fifth grade, uh, notice that concepts and procedures for math and writing for ELA were the big um, standouts. And they've set some goals. Um, I can read them. Kids have trouble seeing that writing an explanation is part of math. They often view it as just numbers. We can work on written ex explanation of answers in math. Um, give a writing template for answering math questions, kind of a scaffold for them. Perhaps use fit time to, th to think of different ways to solve the problem and write about math. Use word banks. Um, model, do it together first. Fill in the blanks. Templates to start. Um, and just look at different ways to solve problems. So they really thought, thought about it. I actually was pretty impressed with their mm -hmm. <laughs> level of um, interventions that they're going to try in their classrooms. And then in 6th <coughs> through 8th, um, oh, didn't copy that one, did I? Huh. So Beth, Beth was kind of on our new math teacher, old math coach, was uh, looking mostly at the math data. And she, she needs to dig a little bit more into it, but she's thinking concepts and procedures are the first priority. And she is using, I know Beth is using um, exit, exit tickets regularly in math <coughs> and doing the, um, we've talked about using the pre-assessment and the post-assessment mm -hmm. for each module. So she's using that. and. Um, implementing fluency work into her classes to improve the computation skills. So they're, they're looking at it. I mean, honestly, they, they, I think it's really important to look globally at where the gaps are, but it's also what, the, what they're doing regularly is looking at classroom data and using it to drive their instruction, their, nec their next day instruction or their fit time instruction. But we do have, a, we've got some gaps large gaps so it, the um, we are talking <coughs> at the admin level we're just talking about maybe thinking about figuring out and it's really complicated figuring out a model where there is time for our special educators and our regular ed education classroom teachers to do some co-planning looking mm -hmm. at curriculum modifying what um, what's being taught um, and they don't really we don't really have that in our schedule right now mm -hmm. so it's hard <laughs> our, uh, it, I mean it looked like almost every school in the state has the exact same gaps yeah <laughs> so this is not yeah it's not a, not it's not a unique problem right. to Heartland but so is is the state providing any resources to help uh, everybody since everyone is addressing the same problem it seems like there should be something sort of I mean, statewide. other than looking at the uh, um, MTSS system, well, new the recommendations. I, I know the state is doing, and they're they're starting up a new one. Is they're they're um, developing networked improvement communities, mm -hmm. um, and they're in their second year with an instructional coaching community yeah. that um, our instructional coaches participated in last year, and our literacy coaches participated in this year. And I mean, it's all data based, and looking at you know, the looking at developing interventions that they can, you know, strategies that they can use and then gathering data to see 
looking at the effectiveness. They're starting up a new one mm -hmm. for um, uh, uh, upper level administrators, which I think will be helpful too, because it's how do we use data in a meaningful way? And then working with other systems that are experiencing the same kinds of problems and looking at how they're solving those problems. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that the agency is doing that's really hopeful and helpful. I think yeah. will be helpful. But it's it's not. Uh, I mean, it's if you're interested at this point. The data literacy join, project right. that we yeah. we um, participated in a data literacy training in August. Um, that is, uh, I think, there we're going to try to continue that training throughout mm -hmm. the school year. Um, so there's just there's a few different things going on that they're doing to support using data to actually impact right. student learning. Right. We have a lot of data. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of data. Of data. Um, <laughs> the I don't, data literacy day. Did it feel like it touched what you were kind of looking for? And um, that day we were we were mostly looking at did. what the data is mm -hmm. and um, learning to uh, really talking about how to ask questions. It wasn't getting us down to. Right, identifying a a problem with student learning and then figuring out some sort of intervention that you want to try and then looking at how that impacts student learning. It wasn't that level of detail. It was mm -hmm. more broad. It was more broader. That's good like English right there. What, how mm -hmm. to track what data you collect yeah. how to track it, who inputs the data. Yeah. That kind of um, keeping that kind data of integrity and not how yeah. to use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it didn't get down to the, the right and it seems Using like the it. whole state is dealing with the same. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and there are a few schools, I mean, I know if, when you look at that data on the state website, like there are a few schools that seem to have closed the gap more than other schools. And it just, it seems like the state should sort of be looking at As those model, schools right. and, and yeah. giving yeah. people some strategies that, that have worked. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it's a lot of speculation and experimentation. Yeah. And, uh -huh. I mean, I will say we just, um, Angie brought in Phil uh, Maycomer uh, for a UDL training, Universal Design for Learning training for the whole SU, which is a model that could potentially um, help with closing the gap. Mm -hmm. It's just a way of teaching, um, engaging all learners. The practices that she shared are good for, really good for kids with um, unique needs, but really should be used for everybody. Mm -hmm. so, so I, I just, I, to build off that, I want to note that um, that it's natural to start looking at program or curriculum and think that if we mm -hmm. change that, we'll impact student learning. And the, I think that's the wrong question. I think the question needs to be about how we instruct these learners. And if we're just, if we keep changing program, we're losing time yeah. uh, learning yeah. the program, and then it takes several years for students um, to get used to the way a program presents information. So it's very and teachers and, yeah. and, and teachers. teachers. So it's very Everything. important that you you have a program over a period of time. Mm -hmm. We really need to start looking at instruction. And the two workshops that we did on October third and fourth addressed instruction. And I think that that's the theme that we're as an administrative team, we're looking, we're continuing to pursue. Mm -hmm. yep. So how does instruction impact student learning? How can I instruct so that I'm meeting the needs of most mm -hmm. learners or all the learners in my, in my classroom? And that's another reason why this progress monitoring tool that we end up purchasing is really important because it helps take off some of the we're looking for one of our criteria is we're looking for something that's k-12 we're also looking for something that helps teachers design instruction because it provides instructional materials instructional support it puts students it's software based or internet based mm -hmm. and it puts students um, on the skills that they need to practice but it's really it's it needs to be engaging it's not um, to we have a right TMP. This is what in replace to replace TMP. track my progress. Yeah, TMP doesn't do all that. No, it really doesn't. It doesn't. So. And it, so we're the track my progress um, developer is coming in to talk with the in interventionists on Friday to talk about the changes in the program. They did they did make some improvements over the summer, 
Um, and hopefully we can get an idea from him where they're going with the software, like what they have in development, mm -hmm. so that we, as we make our decision, um, we'll have more information in terms of what they could provide us in the future. Is it a big contract? I TMT. I yeah. I it was a three-year contract. I don't know how much dollars. And are we are the only? Do we? I'm just helping you with questions. No. Are we the only school that no. uses? Or is it the whole supervisory? The whole board? supervisory union uses it, which is nice because that gives us some comparative data across right. the supervisory mm -hmm. union. But I think we've just found that it's hard to dig into TMP data. You get an overview, but it's not diagnostic. And by that I mean it doesn't pinpoint the exact skills or the foundational skills that students may be struggling with in order to help them achieve the levels of understanding and skill that we they would be required at that for those grade level standards. So it doesn't if you can get to that information, but it's a lot of digging. Yeah. So So content to be continued. <laughs> Trying to build a culture of um, you know, using data, uh, we're, we're at the at the admin team level. We have a data team that meets before our admin meeting on Thursday. So we're trying to baby steps. We're to, yeah, baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important. So, um, so uh, <coughs> we're gonna delay the radar list just a brief si second longer. Um, Scott wanted to give us an update on negotiations. Yeah. Um, oh, great. So. Thank you. And we will get a, um, <coughs> we will be having an executive session tonight, and we will be getting a broader update on negotiations for executive session. Oh. I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going off of my notes right now. Yeah. <laughs> That is why we were having the executive <laughs> session. <laughs> I thought you said there was another reason. There is. There is yeah. another yeah. reason. Yeah. 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 Okay. But that's an important one. Okay. Yeah. okay. Moving on. <coughs> okay. So this is very brief uh, update on negotiations in WSCSU. We've had one meeting. So the team is uh, Superintendent David Baker, uh, Bill Yates from Muscatney District, Sean Whalen from Weathersfield School District, and Scott myself from Heartland School District and so it's it is unfortunate that it's not a more diverse team this year but that's the team this year um, we will have we so we've met once as to <laughs> look at what our goals are and what David's goals were basically what David's goals were so they um, that was a good meeting and that was very short, actually. We're going to meet again, like hoping to meet with, uh, have the first um, school district and teachers meeting session uh, early November. So that's usually just to talk about uh, how we're going to go forward, maybe some dates, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, so really the thing in the top of my head, and I'm Talk, touch on briefly was the uh, the news of the school insurance rates going up significantly and so that's definitely on the horizon and depends on and how that impacts our budget next year is is still in play so but anyways the headlines across the state were double digit insurance rate mm -hmm. increases 14, right? as Five high as that depending 12. on uh, depending on choices made by employees, 12-ish to 14-ish, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, and what, what that kind of, what's been left out of the discussion so far, and what, at least in the pieces I've seen, is the, uh, we know that there's a, a, a commission in, in play right now, uh, uh, an employer and employee, um, negotiation taking part right now at the statewide level to provide to arrive at and eventually provide that um, statewide health benefit to all school districts and part of that discussion is arriving at the uh, the uh, the balance between employee and employer 
share of the health insurance premium. So currently in this district, the employer, us, pays 80% and the employees pay 20%. And that is not replicated everywhere across the state today. And uh, so the parties at the statewide level are uh, attempting to you know, come to an agreement on that. And it could, it could mean that Windsor Southeast ends up um, being responsible for more than 80% of premiums in the future, or we could end up very close to where we are now. That's hard to say. So that'll impact that double digit rate increase for sure. And so I just wanted, I mean, I, I actually don't have a lot more to say than that other than that came to mind when um, when Nikki said I had missed before I came in uh, the 68,000 it was noted that 68,000 yeah. mm -hmm. was perhaps uh, that we were looking at uh, a little less <coughs> responsibility on our budget uh, for wages and benefits you know, mm -hmm. just because of yeah. some more senior employees retiring and So I think that, that that's true, I um, for sure, but it could certainly be impacted by the increases in health rates. I'm not sure where yeah. what is, is in that number, and uh, so we should just go be careful going ahead. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for doing that work. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, uh, the rest of your committee is also on the budget committee. Like those guys are oh, those guys are on the budget. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were <laughs> laughing about that, how they were uh, kind of like, like on every committee. needed yeah, on a, bu a bunk committee. bed down yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, the, um, was I just, something just came to mind. Um, I'm sorry, what was I just going to say? Oh, so, yeah, I mean, in executive session, the details, which I can't share now, I wouldn't wouldn't be appropriate. But I, um, I just wanted to get into the. You guys may or may not know. I think you do, but how the salary grid works, what kind of uh, employee um, wage increases are built into the salary grid that happen. Um, structurally year after year and and kind of how where that came from and and kind of what it means in, in especially in light of uh, like that the reasons behind that uh, difference in the wages and benefits that we were just discussing from this year to last next year so that's the nature of that Thank you, sir. you're welcome um, okay so we could skip to the principal's sure. report or go to the radar list. I think we should skip to the principal's report and then we can. And then Colleen, I was going to lean on you maybe to pull it. Was this on forwarded? Oh, sure. I just sent it to you. Okay, I forgot just to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Where I was just sitting there. I didn't send it to them. Yeah. Well, I was waiting for some food service staff, which Thank I got. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Just as a starting point. The three, yeah, yeah. can you give us a history on the three bells? Well, actually, so save it, because it's coming up right. as part of my report. Okay. There's a three question. Bells? Yeah, these the bells. bells. That, these bells. Oh, the three bells. I know that bell. From all yeah. the schools, yeah. right? They were, they were from all, when the school consolidated, mm -hmm. they brought the bells from all the schoolhouses. Okay, I think Sarah's got it. Sarah's got it, okay. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, so those were like, well, one was from Brad, I. one was from... <laughs> The Jennyville School one was from okay. Clay Hill. And they sort of brought them all together. Huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're here. They're out front. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get to that because that's part of um, the portrait of a graduate um, stuff we're going to talk about. Okay. So we'll start with some good highlights. Um, I shared with you that the integrated team, which is made up of the six eight core teachers and related arts <coughs> teachers um, is meeting monthly. I didn't get a picture of Beth in here, but she came last month and did, um, and she's being funded by grant money at this point. And she's really helping us um, with our advisory program, which involves um, 
PLP work and trying to move to a more um, integrated project-based model. And so she was here, and the first activity we did with her was um, jobs of the future. So she had all of these jobs that are, you know, not existent, uh, not That's in fun. existence right now, and the names were kind of fun. And we had to we had to imagine what that job would be, and do a little. Um, we had a little appetizer hour, and kid, um, the staff had to go meet somebody and explain what their job was. Um, and it was just to get the staff thinking about what we need to do in education now, because the kids that are leaving us are going into jobs that don't exist right now. So um, it, was to get, it was to get their mind thinking in that way. It was fun. She came back this month, um, just last week, and we're doing um, radio bits. The staff had to imagine that the state of Vermont has um, given us um, permission to uh, build our own school, uh, own middle school, and what would we want that to be? What would that look like? And we're creating little um, sound bites that would be on the radio, um, and we're going to record them next month. So it might help That's us with cool. our portrait of a graduate. Or, yeah, she's phenomenal. Um, so That's I'll keep really you posted, cool. but I'll share the I'll share them when, when we're done with them. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it, they get stuck though. The staff's like, well. I mean, we, we can do whatever we want. Cost doesn't matter. I'm like, yes, we're dreaming right now. <laughs> we're <laughs> dreaming. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they're like, Dream. what about standards? Dream. Dream. What would you <laughs> want it to be? It's hard to think that way, though. <laughs> so um, Beth was here. Um, I think most of you, actually, I think all of you are at Open House. It was a great success. Yes. Um, yes. Dinner was awesome. Craig did an amazing job. We're going to um, have our next dinner November 20th, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Something. Don't write that down, Scott. I, it might Don't. be wrong. I might be wrong. I'll I can look it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be paired with math night this time, right? Yes. So we're working on that. Uh, the 25th, yes. 25th. Mm -hmm. You can write that. 5.30 to 7. 25th. Okay. You're all invited. Um, 25th. 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 Thanksgiving. Yeah. Before the break. Right? Before, Before the, break. the break. Yeah. It's late. Thanksgiving's late this year, so. But it was great. We had a wonderful turnout, and people really seemed to enjoy themselves and connected. So, um, the middle schoolers went to um, the corn maze again this year, and um, we had a. I mean, it was a hot day last year. We went in the rain, so it wasn't as f much fun. This year it was nice and warm, and they have this entire area where kids can play and they have like this huge thing full of corn and middle schoolers were in it burying each other with the <laughs> corn or <laughs> lassoing. I mean, they had these tri these trikes that, mm -hmm. um, and a, a, a raceway kind of graveled area where they were riding and it was just, um, it was fun to see them play, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. It really was. They uh, wh where? Where is it? It is um, near Killington. It's called oh. Hathaway Farms. Mm -hmm. Towards Killington? Yeah, yep, it's about 50 minutes, 50 minute ride. Oh. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Good community building activities for the advisories. Um, we had our first walk to school, which was October 1st, and we had a great turnout. And there's our SRO, Officer Paul, helped us with traffic. And just to give kudos to Angie CH, who plans and organizes all of those wellness things. Is that still going on every? Every when Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, we have Melanie Westenfeld and Wanda Welch who take turns meeting the kids um, to walk to school on Wednesdays. How many kids are doing it on a regular not, basis? Not many. Yeah. Not many. A handful, like six or seven. We see them. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much every yep. Wednesday. <coughs> not always that many. Yeah, they're there. Um, so we hosted the Spelling Bee last week. We had 11 students participate, and they didn't win, but that's okay. Um, and the coaches were Jenny Knight and Eve Anderson, two of our interventionists, and they've actually uh, um, offered to continue like a spelling club all year so that next year the kids will be more confident at the spelling bee. So, yeah, it went well. Um, and there's, there's Nikki, safety day. <laughs> we did bus evacuation drills. Um, fire safety and science and then the kids got to of course see all the equipment outside in the trucks which is a big deal 
Um, I think you did a great job with the fire science. I learned a little bit. Well, I got to see a little bit of it. <laughs> um, and just, um, I don't know if, probably, I don't know if any of you would know, but um, Northern Stage contacted um, the school about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hugh, who's in the picture, he was a part of this Stories of White River Junction. And they came last um, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So we, we part, which is part of, um, well, the gym issues on our mind because we had to figure out how to have a performance, move gym class, set up, <laughs> and have lunch. So we actually had a plan to have a barbecue outside. Yeah, it was oh. nice, which it, which it was. Um, yeah. But our backup plan was for Craig to serve on the slate foyer inside. So wow. we had a plan, but it took a lot of yeah. coordinating to figure it out, wow. scheduling. Um, so the updates, the portrait of a graduate design team met last month. It was fantastic. It was great to have, we had um, students there. Um, is that we, the first one? That was the first one. Our next one is next Thursday, I next believe Thursday. the 30th at Weathersfield. We're taking turns at locations. We really talked about landscape shifts. Um, Angie's going to send Wednesday. out Wednesday. next Wednesday. You're going to send out a little bit of yeah, information about that on your blog. Is gonna be but something. our task is Mike um, Nicholson, the facilitator, is looking for logos, photos, and artifacts that visually represent each of our communities. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping you can help me with that. Um, three bells for sure, right? Um, mm -hmm. But if you have other ideas or photos, the double covered bridges probably for Harland. The double covered bridges. Does um, does anyone are there? Is there photos there's anywhere? Sure. There's a uh, on the Welcome to Heartland signs. There's a painting of it of the mm, double bridges. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's you know, in North <laughs> Heartland as you go. You know? No, I have no idea. I don't even know where the bridges are. To north north, north Highland. Highland. <laughs> there's like you pass the double covered bridges. Okay. Right. Right there by the interstate. We have to take you for a drive. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have yeah. yeah. to I'll take it. Yeah. Some information really to Jamie about that. So let me look at that because she yeah, had sent more. him a variety of um, ideas. Mm -hmm. Oops. She had a lot of student pictures, which you yeah. know we have those, but I think it's broader than that. It's yeah, more that. Like what represents our community. Design brainstorm include images, symbols, items, etc. that they convey the important <laughs> parking lot in the middle of the intersection. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what's funny yeah, is that I know statue. so the many wars. people that look back fondly yeah, the on Civil War statue. Right. Civil War statue. That's you want to read that? Yeah. yeah. So Mike, our, Mike Perfect. Nicholson, our um, consultant, said the artifacts desired for this concept design, brains, concept design brainstorm, include images, symbols, icons, <coughs> etc., that would convey the important meanings of this portrait work and/or identify this community. The images we ultimately decide on from the brainstormed collection should quickly identify this community and spark interest, curiosity, excitement about the portrait work. So we're looking for mm -hmm. images, pics, icons, symbols, etc. Not text-based. That represent so the Windsor Union. Southeast Supervisory Union. Oh, oh so not, you start not, not, not Well, Heartland. Heartland is part of Windsor yeah. Southeast Supervisory yeah, okay. Union. Jean Marie sent a variety of images today from Weathersfield. Yeah. So I, I think mm -hmm. it'll be an interesting yeah. collection yeah. to right. curate as, we're, as yeah. we're looking at this and thinking about the portrait work and trying to come up with the images that really represent our community as a whole. So it's all yeah. it's all part of the process of bringing yeah a bringing whole community communities together. together, right? Yeah, bring their own community mm -hmm. symbols and your yeah. I can see the kind definitely the bell. And the, the bells for sure. Are, yeah, are yeah, good pretty cool. And the bells are three communities that came together, mm -hmm. right? Do you have any pictures of the kids on the Connecticut River in the spring? A canoe trip. There must be some pictures. I, of I, I can ask Linda might because she she holds um, yeah a lot of pictures. She takes a lot of pictures. Was that a um, an annual trip down the Connecticut River? I don't know that it's happened since I've been here. Am I thinking? Am I thinking Windsor? high school? I <laughs> 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 maybe thinking. I haven't been. I didn't know the kids were out there. Trip. They did camping last they year. They did. They went camping. They went camping. They went to great. They went to you New it. York, um, Lake Greece George. Greece. They go to Lake, Lake George, George. Yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah. I thought that the yeah, I don't think there's been a canoe kids. trip. No, not no. in my experience. Uh, I mean, it's not a long one. It's yeah. just uh, they set in at the um, 
you know, above the bridge mm -hmm. and go down to uh, John John's oh, takeout. Hammond, John, John Hammond's yeah. takeout. Yeah. yeah, it's just like yeah. we stop at the island on the way for lunch. Yeah. It's I, a, think that's a high I guess school. it's a high school thing. I think I'm it sorry is. about <laughs> that. <now. laughs> but it kind of <laughs> goes along next to the communities, right? Yeah, yeah. So we don't yeah. have those. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, <thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can see any, or if you're driving and you see something that stands out, just take a picture and send it on. Okay. On our way. And when is the due date for that? Gosh, he didn't give us um, a due date. I think it's probably um, for the fourth session. <laughs> so January. Okay. So the fourth okay. session, January. I am assuming. So he said it was when he, uh, David and I talked with him a couple weeks ago about this. He said, just be thinking about what that might yeah. be. So it's not really an assignment for this portrait mm -hmm. session. So but it may be right for now. next yeah, session. It, it will not be beautiful the next You're session. You're right. <laughs> the leaves are still. It'll be stick <laughs> season. <laughs> Cloudy yeah. stick season mm -hmm. in a month. Yeah. <laughs> season. yeah, it's true. Yeah. November so is pressing upon us. Yeah. So we meet next week. With the for a second session, and, and I think there's like a pre meeting. There's a well, pre meeting he for all day. the people that had training at Lake Maury. Okay, you so are one yeah. of those people. Okay. Yeah, and then we t we're talking them. about bringing the students together. So today, yeah, I'm Ooh, so this excited is so about exciting. It. So today we just um, uh, I ha we had a phone conference with them, and we were talking about that fourth meeting and how how he's really thinking about a way to a to keep people in, involved and excited about the process for the next two meetings but also to draw people into that fourth meeting and stick with the process long enough to to um, get to the fourth meeting so the idea is he'll be here all day next Wednesday and to meet with the students who are involved and get them um, brainstorming and thinking about what is it that they need the adults to know about them and about students mm -hmm. that that are in our system now and coming up in our system and who might be in our system in the future and um, it really is a way to get people emotionally connected to the yeah. work that we're doing so yeah. it's very yeah, exciting yeah so that'll That's happen cool. next week yep oh that was Maddie she's from Heartland right uh, it's a terrible picture but in the middle Maddie Richardson yeah Yep, and we had another student, Iris Moran, who's there with us as well. And Whitney. That's pretty cool. So you Sydney. Took took over I mean, Sydney, I was going to. <laughs> yeah. Took over the gym. At, at in the Windsor, gym. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah, it was good. It, it was, was neat, great. but Windsor needs a, definitely needs a bigger screen in that. Yeah. For yeah. that gym. Yeah, so and yeah, that, that was hard, hard, was to, hard to see. Yeah. But oh, I didn't even know. So there's a. But the food was great. There, right okay. where Mike is, that's Mike right oh, okay. there, and oh, the yeah. screen is right oh, there. Yeah. Just a screen yeah, about the size of the Promethean too. board. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it was very challenging. And we had to about see, eighty so. people. Yeah. yeah. So. Se seventy maybe. <coughs> yeah, some people didn't. Yeah, some chill. Okay. Um. So there's Officer Paul. Paul just our update. Um. Well, the. You were here today and shadowed Officer Paul. Um, uh, Alan. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, your name escaped me for a minute. You came today and did a little um, shadow of Officer Paul. So That's he, awesome. Yeah, it was great. Um, so he's been super responsive. We've had to call him for a couple of things, but he's um, stopping by pretty much every day, um, serving on our safety committee, our truancy um, mm -hmm. committee when we need to meet. Um, I asked him your question la from last month, Scott, about kind of statistics on uh, s children leaving school grounds. Um, you asked me about that. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I how? I, and I the said, context of that was how do I get that data? Well, because we've called him for that. Um, that's kind of our practice. When a student oh. goes off school grounds, we call. We used to call the state police. Um, we keep eyes on as best we can. We call the police. Call the parents. Uh, yeah, that's coming back to me now. I think yeah. that might have come across wrong. I was thinking that that <coughs> I was trying to convey to those at home that these kind of happenings are consistent, in my understanding. In schools? In schools. Yeah, so he said, I asked Paul, um, he said last year he had to, um, he was called to Windsor a couple of times for kids, but... They don't call for high school age kids because they're old enough to, I mean, they call the parents, but yeah. they don't call the police. Yes. And then he said, I said, well, if I wanted that data more globally, how would I get it? 
and he said it would be really, really hard because they don't log it. They log it as um, an agency assist, so the officers would have to go back in their call log, call logs, and it would take it would take a lot of time to figure that out. Yep. So if you really want it, I can no, take. But no, I think we're. He, yeah, you know, it same, happens on the same page. Yeah. yeah it happens. Um, so questions about officer call. I think we're, we were still wondering if that um, accreditation had been Oh, achieved. yes, right. the, tra the SRO training. Right. Yeah. I totally forgot that one. And I'm it's assuming gone. it did. I'm I mean, assuming I think that it was too. sometime in the end of the summer or something like that. Yeah. Um, the chief has been in, too, just to check in. And he's um, called, brought a few other people, too, just to, so that they're familiar in case yeah. he's out or it's whatever. Text oh, yeah. Yeah. Then there's other people that mm -hmm. the school's familiar with. And he's helping us with the... Um, evacuation drill which was going to happen oh, last week awesome. but didn't <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i yeah, will um i'll send him a message yeah, after and ask him that question yeah. i forgot about that one um and then lunch program so craig got me this today uh nice yeah and he ran the figures from last year to date so from the beginning of school to now those were the numbers were up you know, almost fifty-four hundred dollars, and that was two more days off school. Yes, correct. Oh, and look at the non-student meals. And the non-student meals are up significantly. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, wow, yeah. That's um, I didn't get the I I just got the data, so I pulled out just the highlights quickly. Um, yeah, so there were three more days of school yes. last year than this year. Yes, so that's much higher. Higher than that. That's great. Yep, that's great. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So the kids are, I mean, the food is great, and the kids are enjoying it, the staff's enjoying it, they're eating more. Um, it looks, the presentation matters, and it's yeah. really it's making a that. difference, yeah. So, so far so good. We just don't want to burn him out, because he is working a lot, I know. <laughs> we'll say. How yeah. about on me? How is Any, he doing? Oh, sorry. I was wondering about the, like, the input side. This is the revenue. Yeah. This is more like the revenue side. I don't have. I asked Ed yeah, that, but that. he um, he he didn't get that to me yet. I think he's. Um, I think there was a lot of money that went in up front. I mean, because we bought a cow. Yep. Um, yes. So, I think there's probably some catch up. Yeah, I yeah. mean, would be my guess. Yeah, I would think it would be a learning curve yeah. there. And Ed, so, Ed, when I asked Ed, he said it's kind of early for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I said okay, I, I mean, and I think that's partially like. Yeah, I think there was a big upfront cost. Too. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I see him. Um, so when I'm down there every other week doing the Heartland warrants, guys, mm -hmm. then I I, I frequent. I don't know. Every other month or something, I pass Craig. So I get the impression that he's, you know, conferring with. He's everywhere. Ed and he's everywhere, David on yeah. a pretty regular yeah. basis. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. He is. He is. And they're trying to um, really support what he needs to make the program successful. So we have, we, I, we, we purchased um, steamer or some piece of equipment. Yeah, he told me that early there was some piece yeah, of equipment that he needed. Or needed. warmer to keep the food warm. I can't remember what it yeah. was, but so just trying to make sure he has what he needs. It was a steam table. It was a steam table. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I know, Brittany and I have both been known to be in there serving lunch because yeah, the lines are long because lots yeah, of kids are eating. Kids, so you get in there and help try to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is so fun, actually. Yeah, really fun. That's pretty that's cool. A, yeah, that's great. That's special that kids. excitement, yeah. 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 Um, and then a uh, fundraiser re request from um, the uh, drama kids. They want to do uh, another haunted house. They did it last year at Pumpkins in the Park, I believe. Do you recall that? Yeah. Um, it was a big hit. They raised some money. The kids loved it. Um, but the parents and the kids want this to come back. So it's a fundraiser. That's which needs cool. your approval. At, in our world of not having a lot of volunteer support, the fact that we have parents asking to I know, do right? a fundraiser. Yeah. Like, yes, yes, please. And the, te and the teacher's <laughs> like, all right, oh, I guess. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, like, amazing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> please. Um, and then their their annual variety show as well. She put both in here, so. 
That is, I want to say, November 23rd. Is it? Uh, Have they set a date for that? I got one today. Hold on. Uh, Oh, wait, no. Um, Where are you, show? Where are you, show? November November 23rd. November 23rd. If you approve it. It is November 23rd. Okay. That's good. Abe's not doing drama club, so I think he's going to do the prize. So, is that okay? Those are okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm worried all about those dates being really close to the community dinner because oh. that would be that Saturday and then another month and then Monday. Oh, I didn't get a date from her. Well, yeah, you were so just saying you got 23rd, November 23rd for the variety show. Saturday. I don't think, I don't think that so. would be. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It might just be chairs. She's done it. So last year, I don't think they did the variety show because they didn't have the drama club right. in the fall. This year it's back, and this is the traditional um, fundraiser to help them get to New York in the spring to see the Broadway show. Okay. So, And, and it, as I remember, I mean, we do all the cleanup after, yep. and it, so it shouldn't require anything. I was yeah. just thinking more like sometimes we try to spread those events out because then it's another night out for families. Consecutively, which can be a challenge. Good point. Is that close the twenty third is Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. And then the twenty third is the Monday. So it's two nights before the yeah. right, right before the holidays. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't know. Well, maybe we, we can ask her and then we talk to yeah. Jamie about time. it and yeah. just say, hey, yeah. maybe we should think about a different date. Yeah. Because the farm to school date, the the dinner event. I mean, at this point, it's in it's everything. Yeah. 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 Since yeah. summer. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and that's it. We did the data dive already. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, boy. It's everything. Yeah. Christine, when I saw the... Um, I guess I'm conflating two parts of the agenda, but I saw testing results above principal's report. I was wondering about um, lead testing. State any anything you can tell us about? Um, I know that... Well, progress. Mike does the water tests, and he's up to date because I get all the emails from the state on that. But I guess I don't know if that's I haven't I haven't seen or heard. I can certainly check with him. Do you Wait, have no. information? No, no. I um I'm in relation to the big push after last year's legislative season, yeah. you know, right. to, to canvas the whole state. Test and all they school. tested quite a few schools. They tested some in our district, some some preschool. Yeah. Oh. Um, in our I'll district. check with them. But I don't, I don't wonder, so they haven't been here? I didn't doing, see anybody, yeah. but it could have happened this summer when, you know. But that's something that you guys do on a regular basis anyway, so maybe they're, maybe they're accessing that. Could be. I'll check with Mike. So we do lead testing on a regular basis anyway? Or we do yeah. water testing? We do water. water he testing. does the water testing, yes. Okay. Mike, Mike is licensed to do that. He does it for the oh. whole... SU. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. The lead testing, though, I think involves testing at specific locations around the square yes. because different yeah. pipes and faucets yes. have different and results. Different and different times of day. And different times of day, right. So right. there, I think there's a uh, protocol that the state is going yeah. around. And of course, everyone's right. terrified because yeah, right. it's, it's so expensive everybody. to remediate. And right. if they find it, then they have to remediate. But um, Do they come in, Sarah? Do you know? Do I, they send people? I don't. I mean, it sounds like they just kind of picked out a representative sample of schools and they're trying to get a sense of how much okay. it's out there and then they'll go deeper if they need to. Okay. Um, but we could probably, I mean, who would be the person to ask? Someone that... It would be Mike. Would be, okay. Yeah. I just texted him, so we'll see. Um, so, we'll see what he says. But that is the end of the principal's report. Thank you. Do you have questions? Yeah. Um, it's not on the agenda, but Angie, is there anything from the SU that we don't, this is our second meeting without a uh, yeah. <laughs> superintendent's report, so. Oh, oh um, I don't have a superintendent. You don't have any. <laughs> no, I don't. Except the student. I just the thought I. The superintendent I'd is in New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at his equity uh, right. uh, conference. Okay, so. so there's nothing else that is so budding there that we'll, no. we'll wait another month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And if he, he want, uh, if he. So last time, he Weathersfield was the same night as this yeah. meeting. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to happen again because they're moving their meeting to the first Monday of the month. Mm-hmm. But if he can't be here next time, 
I would be happy to represent him. Yeah. We can talk. David and I can talk. No, I think at some point we need him to Some information. Oh, maybe <laughs> David. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably I think by the time we get to the third meeting, we'd like to yeah. have him. But yeah. Um, now, and uh, yeah, their meeting had to change because of the holiday yeah. or something. And he's, some at, he's at the um, equity right. um, fellowship yeah. Yeah. this week. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's dive into some radar list. Um, all right. Uh, so... That's why I volunteered computer. Colleen to plug her computer in. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I just unplugged. Does it reach over here? Or should we mm, no, we change places? places? I don't think it reaches that far. What do we do? What do you um, I'm trying to grab your you need for an adapter? Do you have the I do oh, why are you Chromecast to that, right? I'm oh, sorry, I was not listening. Can you just Chromecast? Uh, yes, you can, you can, I think, but that's the easiest way. Yeah, you just look for that little we go. We're not Windsor Southeast, we're not. Yeah. We're not. Oh, there's a discussion. Uh, this is a state oh, list. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're so not, what did okay, you find? You found that at the agency. I'm not on a yeah, I just did Vermont is, is yeah. it's it's education yeah. led testing. Can you share it? And they, I think you. So, did you share it? I, I can plug in my. Right? I think it's the old spreadsheet. She shared it at the, 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 the end of the last meeting. Yeah, right. there's too many districts. Not even anybody close to us. And this is the best to walk in about now. Well, Springfield. Yes, I do remember you sharing it last time. What is it? I specifically saw so some results. Oh, 2019 radar oh, list. Central, is it? Oh, oh, I heard it. Hold on. Um, oh, that's just the notes. Well, you did a spreadsheet, right? And, and these guys were yes. In September. Let's see. Did you see that article? Um, the results to include mm -hmm. the four quarters coach? No. It was on, I think it was in the VT thing. Yeah. She um, did send it last time, didn't she? Yeah. She but I can't. Oh, the preschool. Yeah. So yeah, maybe yeah. this is just. Did you email it or share it? Oh, I emailed it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, guys. There's oh, probably starting with preschools that make sense yeah, for the physiology aspect of it. Um, it's an Excel sheet that I sent as an attachment. I will listen to see. Yeah. Very old fashioned. Into the does it look like this? Yeah. Yes. It does okay. look like that. That's just, it looks like this is just a screenshot, though. Mm. Oh, really? But that, that's what I, I that's I what she sent in the email. I might have sent a screenshot, too. Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe we do need you to plug in my color. <laughs> okay. Well, is it a spreadsheet? You can just share it or not? Yes. How do I do that? Um, you probably, you could email it. <laughs> I'm totally so good at that. <laughs> I love every one of us has a certain part of tech. <laughs> the whole picture needs oh, to be in my no. file. Okay. So file, can you download so the, it? So the benefit it of those watching. It was down in an email thread. Same as oh, there it is. No. Okay. Um, so there export it, it as a Google Doc. I can get my <coughs> email thread. I'm not sure over. What we're talking about here. Oh, we're just looking for the. I just wanted to get it up on the screen so that we could all can see this. everything. Oh, yeah. Well, not even just yeah, that. Sure, like, sure. just. Sure, I'd like to narrow it down. It oh, this is the finish. this is the graph that Colleen made last that, time. Yes. Last, last board meeting. Right. Yes. Got you, Colleen. Um, I forget about that. So, the for the benefit of the public that's watching, <laughs> yeah, um, we put together yeah. a list of things that were important for us. Or maybe you can just attach um, them. Yeah. And we're so trying to get downloaded as a spreadsheet. that okay. compiled yeah, into a list saw. that's a group list of things that are important for us. Um, and I say, like, maybe we, maybe we work on this for a half hour and then call time out and come back to it. Um, Unless we feel like we're going to wrap it up, and, I mean, what I guess, like, yep. the question is, what's our goal with it? Is is it to identify so items for the budget? I'd like is it action? Are we identifying I'd, action that's items? What I thought I'd like so the the goal of the radar right. list was to um, identify um, items that were important to the entire group, so that they didn't get left behind as the year went on. So it's kind yeah. of like a modified goals. Yeah. Yep. Um, like we want to make progress on these six topics. Mm -hmm. um, and so my thought is that on every agenda page, we would have the radar list at the bottom and just 
either note that we address and things on the radar list at every meeting or yep. um, check in and say, wasn't there something that happened on this part of the radar list or something like that? Just to, to make sure that we're making progress on those things that mm -hmm. the group decides are important um, things to go forward with. <coughs> um, so, okay, so Colleen put together a, a, a table. Just send it. Did you send it? And I sent it to all of you. So. Okay. Um, I don't even have internet <laughs> on this right now. Um, that was like giving machine. birth. Well, I don't know. So at the last meeting, we each came prepared with a list of things that we thought were important going forward. Um, and I'd like to pare that down um, a bit and kind of bring some concepts together. Okay. Um, see it now? So you, let's see. Colleen, you know how this is structured, though. So you might, might be easiest to look at that radar list. This one? Yeah. Which is just the whole list. OK. Um, and you can look at the pivot kind of let you look at it in groups, too. OK. Um, uh, if you want to use the filters, you, you could filter on one like type. But you wanted to see numbers, right? The yeah, let's look at the pivot table again, because I think that that helped us. Okay. Um, oh, it doesn't, right, because Chrome wouldn't do a pivot table. OK. Um, Let me just switch with you want to plug in all of that. So it looks like special ed is maybe the highest on everybody's list. Yeah. Well, although it's uh, it's interesting because when you actually look at the radar lists, only Do you want to plug in? Like you didn't mention it, Nikki. Uh huh. I didn't I mention it. Dry oh, interesting. Bit. Scott didn't mention it. I w that would surprise me. I mean, Beth says I special education it. staffing, but and Colleen does say special education laws change and how affect us. Okay. But I was surprised to to see yeah. that so high because it didn't seem to me that it was. Um, okay. And like, like both Colleen and I had mentioned, you know, preparation for high school, but that didn't show up at all. So I was a little confused by the okay. list. Okay. Uh, I need to connect to the network. Or by the graph, I guess. The, yeah. I mean, the rate of the list is here, but yeah. And Colleen, that's not a slam on your graph making abilities at all. <laughs> I was just saying that the graph didn't totally, didn't exactly represent what's on our radar list in the minutes. That there were some things that seemed to have, seemed to be that huge on the graph, but like yeah, didn't actually show up that much here. Okay. That we were confused by. I did some really fast categorizing. I, it, right. So. Oh, that's what that was Which, off to the side. Yeah. Um, so that may be how it So I, I kind of split the the things in the list up by one by big a big category and then subcategories. And it was kind of what else we got on here? We have on the other <laughs> side. She's got a, like a Oh I do have that. She's this. got the, no this let me see that. No, not that. This? Well, no, not that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there is that. Wait a minute. You have right this? here. This will work. In the minutes, right there's a good yeah. little. I realized that I've never tried. Okay, that's not just what her on. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to knock that down. I'll try not yeah, to knock that down. I just ran out of battery power. Oh gosh, we are falling apart. That's the end of my. All right, okay. now we're good. With this thing, it doesn't want to go. Okay. 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 Um, so it might help to look at what these items were.
take a few yeah. minutes. Appreciate that. Thank you. So, do we all want to just take a minute to read this to reflect? Read the minutes again. Yeah. And maybe each, then we'll go around and each one of us highlight. Hey, you're Beth Ruin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, we are just getting into a, talking about the radar list. Um, we're going to try and pare it down um, into some. <laughs> something we can something. do in a timely manner. <laughs> that sounds smart. So we're just reading things to see. I think, okay, so here's my idea for facilitating, and Beth can tell me if this is an okay one. Everybody read the list, and then we'll go around the circle and figure out the thing that popped out to you the most. From our like own something list? repetitive? Or no, from, from, from list or everybody's from list. From everybody's list. Like, like that seeing commonalities, okay. or just yeah. like I'm most passionate about? Mm seeing commonalities but recognizing that the person that's most passionate about may recognize commonalities. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's right. that's we all good. might see things differently. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay. Um, and I apologize. This was part of our retreat that oh. we haven't finished yet. So it is kind of a retreaty type Were activity. <laughs> people doing just two more minutes one more minute I'm good. Okay. Yeah. No, you good. Okay. Thank you. Christine, do you want to start us off since you're on that end of the table? Sure. Um, the, the things that kind of overlapped for me were um, community um, engagement or getting the community involved came up a few times. Um, Uh, one of the biggies. I well, I agree. put my own bias in here. Uh, that's um, why we're all doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we all have bias. You know, and so the social and emotional needs of our kids mm -hmm. is big. Um, and then, are we? Are you want like top three? Sure. I mean, 
because in theory, we should start to get some repeats as we go around. We should. <laughs> so the other one, um, I think, is really, and I, I don't know if it would be, if I would categorize it under culture or not, but really, it's all about engaging our kids and investing mm -hmm. in the future. That kind of goes together in my mind, making sure our kids' needs are met through instruction and intervention. I know it's hard to do it when it's. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. looking through this, special ed pops out at me in a lot of different ways, and seems that you know it's something that we're dealing with in budgetary issues, definitely, as well as um, behavioral issues, as well as you know it kind of goes into everything. So for me, that was kind of really popping, and then as well as. Um, Kind of almost like variety of programming so looking at you know the music and algebra class science instruction and those kinds of like what's the portfolio i guess of like classes and instruction that we're offering kind of two things that kind of stood out, know, stood out to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. i'm i'm right there with beth um the two that really stuck out for me were sort of special ed slash social emotional needs of our kids and just this question but like and I think we're all coming at it from different angles there's the budgetary question there's the there's the test score gap question you know mm -hmm. we're spending a lot of money on it and how are we doing mm -hmm. that, you know what's what's what are the results um, and and then just you know how can we help kids who are really struggling to um, to be there so they can learn and you know all those questions um, and then um, what you described is a variety of programming. I, you know, I think as I was looking over it, I see this question of um, of creating equity with with other <laughs> other high schoolers in the area, and with you know making sure that our kids go to high school prepared um, to with you know rich experiences mm -hmm. in science, rich experiences in music and theater. Um, Probably most importantly, though, um, to me, you know, just really prepared with the basics that they know how to write, that they know how to study and take notes and <laughs> do all those things that you need for success in high school. Um, that they've had access to grade level math um, that will allow them to do whatever they want with math in high school. So I think that that I think we all sort of described it a little differently, but it seemed to me that that's what we were all mm -hmm. describing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I agree with all of that, um, and I did. I for me the special ed um, popped out uh, particularly, um, and also I think Beth phrased it really well in calling it the variety of programming. Mm. I didn't know how to pull that all together, but Great. I could recognize that there was a common thread there. Um, the other thing that popped out, um, which is a bit of a reach, but also. Um, I think it kind of shows up as more of the structural. Um, so for me, it was the Kappa Gymatorium mm -hmm. programming. Um, Scott uh, was looking at building safety and flow. Um, and then Sarah, I lumped you in with the structural of like renaming that we that we yeah. recognize mm -hmm. that right. like that all feels kind of structural to me, um, and also feels like something that we should be keeping track of. So I guess I'm going to call that structural and I'll um, highlight it more. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing, hold on, I'm taking my own notes when trying to talk, um, uh, building name um, and flow. Um, the one thing that really struck me that is something that I'm passionate about. It only shows up in Beth's comment, but um, I feel like one of the ways to engage kids is through science. Um, and I think that, that kind of fits in with personalized learning plans. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I feel like, I, I just feel like kids can relate to their natural world and, to, and through science can pick up other things in life. 
Um, and so I just kind of wanted to say that that's really resonating with me, and I do feel like we're not doing a good job of we're really nailing ELA and math into the ground, and I think we're missing science as a tool to get the ELA Almost to a detriment. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I'm saying that because I feel like it needs to be said, even though it only showed up in one spot. <laughs> missing science? Yeah. We're just, we're just not, we have no focus on it. We focus on ELA and math, but you can teach ELA and math through science and have it be And totally less meet the, the GSS. Like yeah, that. exactly. And, and have it more be more engaging and hit some students that were missing. Do you feel like places. it's missing from a certain grade level? Because I feel like, you know, my kids are, I don't know, getting a good science class. Um, I don't know if I'm I, I, I feel like in the lower grades, yeah, all I, I hear see. about is ELA and math. I feel like there's very little. Some of it's embedded in what they're reading and writing about. Yeah. Um, it's it, it could beef it up, yeah. but I think it's also um, a struggle to. I mean, if you're not integrating it, when do you do it? Right. Yeah. Exactly. When do you yeah. teach it? Mm -hmm. And I think it's we could do a better job of integrating it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It could be too. You know, just since since it, if it is being integrated in the younger grades, which I do think a lot of that it is happening. Um, just because in order to fit it in, you have to teach right. it within mm -hmm. these other concepts. Yeah. So I'm wondering also if students aren't realizing, aren't relating it to, oh, this is this is science. I'm learning about science, yeah. even though it's ELA class. Mm -hmm. Because in their schedules, it's, OK, we're going into ELA. It's not, we're right. going into science. So right. It's right. not departmentalized. Um, so I'm wondering if the, the student's understanding of it as a as a form of science is yeah. maybe being lost there too. I don't know, but it's just something to keep track of and look at. I've just heard from teachers I know that they're struggling with mm -hmm. with it, mm -hmm. and I've heard them say, "I don't. I want to do more, mm -hmm. and I can't." And yeah. I just I'm feeling <coughs> that feeling of like torn, of like no having a real interest in certain topics and just not being able to have either the time, the professional development skills of like just how do I get this moving. I mean, the facilities question is interesting, too, when it comes to science, because I think there's, you know, there's just a lot that we can't do in this building, because we don't have gas lines running, <laughs> running in the right places, and we don't, I mean, there just are all kinds of sort of structural Always comes down to the gas lines. related things. Yes. Um, <laughs> that and that and the sprinklers. Yeah. <laughs> they should be together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh good idea. <laughs> Depending on the but that that could be I mean that's something to maybe keep in mind <laughs> yeah as sort we'll of the structural, lines to the structural the structural or whatever I don't know <laughs> there's plenty of ways to do experimentation yeah yeah I think that and that and that I mean I do recognize that they are like reading things that cover sciencey topics but I'm thinking more of the like a hands-on like um, are they doing do the little kids do the STEM Yes. He's yes, in the library. Yep. Yeah, that's new this year, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, the, um, it, it brings to mind like one of the focuses of you know last year's discussion with the food program. You know, it's like the embedded science education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, and so yeah. we're different. We must be seeing some. They are doing that. I actually yeah. happened upon the um, third grade today. Um, they were. They were preparing for the taste test, which is Wednesday. So they were uh, Mr. Pogue, Mr. Pogue's brother, um, came in with uh, cider press. Oh, cool! And apples from it? yeah, yeah, that's good. Apples from mm -hmm. their farm, and they made. Um, they were talking about some science around it, and um, they made cider and applesauce today in oh, third grade. Awesome. Yeah, that's so. Okay. Yeah, but okay. even incorporating if there's more use of the outdoor classroom, mm -hmm. you know, I'm yeah. seeing teachers wanting yeah. to do it's that more yeah. right. and saying, how can we take their science instruction so they're not mm -hmm. feeling like it's something else added out there? Right. Like, how can it? How can we be doing some of that? You know, in, in, a, in a place, you know, setting. Mm -hmm. They are doing that more. Yeah. Um, first and second grade, yeah. they're going down Force Fridays every other every other Friday. So, and they're and they're going to. Um, there's a workshop November 1st at 
Lake Morey. Yes, and if you would like to see me present, you're welcome to I'll come I'll be too. there in the afternoon. <laughs> I can't come in the morning, but I'll be there in the afternoon. <laughs> So more more nature based education. Yeah, actually, mental awesome. education. It's so really who's going to that from here. Uh, Lauren, Amanda. I think the. F I think um, I'm going in the afternoon. I think I think uh, Anna and Shannon. It's hard because you know yeah. we need yeah. subs and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's complicated. But the keynote's David Sobel, and yeah. he's a teacher at Antioch. At Antioch. Yep. And he's authored many a book, and he kind of started the whole nature deficit disorder kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. He presented that. Um, I went this summer on, I was on a panel um, in, that, uh, in Manchester. Um, oh, like the, Natural the Natural Star, Star Conference, yep. yes. Yeah. And he was there yeah. as well. He's great. Okay. So I, I'm not sure if I went about this the same way everybody else was. I was kind of. Um, looking for uh, comparables, mm -hmm. parallels. And so I, I also came up with community at the top of my scribble list. And so on uh, Nikki's, for instance, I was reaching community, Scott meeting community, Sarah, uh, demographics, keeping track of demographic demographics in the community, um, Beth, Connecting with community, um, concerned with place-based or space-based education, our community, thinking of our community, Colleen, um, community brunch, uh, also I had some meeting at the rec center after school, so resources in our community. So we were all thinking about our role as community liaison mm -hmm. uh, leaders and wanting to engage I think more with our with the broader community make sure we keep that connection alive and I could see that it seemed like we were all focusing on that the second thing was building we all we're all concerned about how the building works for leaders for students of course and uh, in the community <laughs> again, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how the physical plant, you know, it, I, you know, weighs on what can be accomplished here. And I think we heard about that mm -hmm. some of that an hour ago. But, so it can be clunky sometimes. Yep. And we've noticed that. <coughs> guys want to weigh in or the only other thing that I saw that hasn't been said yet was just um, uh, where is it? proficiency based grading and just okay. developing understanding within, within the school students parents staff you know. mm -hmm. that was the only additional thing. I'm glad you said that Brittany because I had actually I had circled that too and didn't say it and that was a and I had a big, written a big, keep communicating <laughs> next to proficiency-based grading. So, uh, but another one of those ways to take the message to the community and listen to the community. Okay, so so here's my, Diane probably has a better summary of whatever I just said, but <laughs> maybe we can cross-check it with what Diane has. Um, so community engagement um, and uh, community engagement, I think, in both directions. So um, getting the community engaged in us and um, making sure we are engaged in the community, um, I think was maybe one of the biggest ones. Um, and then we had the social emotional needs, uh, social emotional needs of kids um, that was somewhat tied to special head and behavioral those do seem to really yeah, yeah. What, I, I didn't hear you they call. seem to be really tied not yeah al um, not always but and not always yeah <laughs> um, okay and then we have engaging and investing in the future um, and that 
as I'm looking at my list, that seems to be pretty tied to preparing for high school and launching kids. Because we launched high school from here. Um, Christine, you're the one that had said engaging. Is that? I, I meant it in a very broad sense. Yeah, variety of programs. Mm -hmm. um, outdoor education, okay. getting kids to um, be the leaders of their learning, personalized learning plans, right. integrated curriculum, it's it's a, yeah. okay. all of those things. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, special ed, uh, which I had somewhat tried to tie to behavioral and social emotional, but Christine told me not to. Well, so. no, it does tie, <laughs> but not <laughs> always, well, not always, not always exactly. but yes, um, uh, m most, uh, most of the time there are, are, are um, some social and emotional needs um, with kids that are special ed special education students, but not always. Yeah. I mean, it might, you might have a learning disability and yeah. it's not tied to social or emotional. Right. Oh, yeah, but yeah. No, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And lots of our kids have social-emotional yes. needs. Yes, that are not. That are not. We right. are yeah. you know, responsible for meeting in a way that we never have been before. Yes. And yes. it's unrelated to, to special ed. Yes. So that, yes. yes. Um, and then I have variety of programming. Yep. Um, preparation for high school. Um, and then uh, building um, structural uh, type things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the name and flow, um, the way that our programming interacts with the building um, and with the land, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then proficiency-based grading. Um, as people read... Is it just grading or is it proficiency-based education? Education, yeah. yeah I okay. think I wrote grading, but I think education is a better one. There's, I think there's confusion about I, I think there all is. of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, <laughs> not just the community understanding. And it's right. reporting. Yeah. It's reporting, right. away from grading and it's reporting. It's reporting yeah. on how kids are doing based yeah. on the standard or a proficiency. And some of our portrait of a graduate work might inform some of it. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the portrait of a graduate will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yes. it's going to tell us what what are the yeah, um, you know what our kids the skills our kids need to have when they leave us, and some of that may not shake down as content. It it might be those learning expectations become more important in the twenty first century um, careers for kids. So problem solving and communicating and being innovative and creative. Um, because honestly, you can you can look up content on your phone, and kids do it all the right. time. And it's changing, yeah. <laughs> so education changes it's changing. in that way. Yes. Yeah. The um, details aren't important. Right. Well, you can go. I mean, well, they're they're, I, they're I, important, I, I but have to know what they're in different ways. ways. The details yeah. are more important because there are so many erroneous details out there, and so. That's I, then I, that getting you learning it. Getting high quality. Well, yeah. Getting high quality content. Learning how to Delivered learn. Delivered by people who how to I learn. Feel are like masters of it, I think, is more important than ever. But that's a much longer discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that skill, the, that's the critical thinking that is mm -hmm. cross-content. Right. It's not right. tied to one yeah. content. Or um, so, so we have an idea of what we think are important to this group. Um, my idea behind the radar list was that it was a short and sweet, like <laughs> bulleted two word descriptor. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like we should flush out maybe a sentence that matches each descriptor that's housed somewhere else. Or maybe we just remember this conversation and know what each descriptor means. I mean, we could just make that list and, as you said, have it at the bottom of, of things that yeah. we. I mean, so, so that we don't forget that these right. are our priorities. That this is what we care about. We kind of want to focus our attention. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that list would be community engagement, social emotional needs, um, engaging and investing in future, um, special ed. I like, um, I'm just trying to decide a variety of programming versus programming <laughs> portfolio. Anybody? Does that go with engaging and investing in the future? Um, I think yes. 
that I does think sound. So. And, and yeah. I think high school readiness is part of that. Yeah, too. I agree. It's, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we want to call that big group of? I, think I guess engaging. Yeah. And investing in the future. What? I think I might have called it curriculum, Pre which is an old word. <laughs> engagement and preparation. Because we're really t engagement, yeah. preparation, and variety. And it's, that sort of seems to capture. Engagement, preparation, right. and variety. We're talking about engaging learners, learners. preparing them for high school. With a variety of programs. Of academic their needs. Okay. Um, I'm t taking notes on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my reader like list. Hard. I don't want to do any work. I I'm going to throw a word out there that is um, process, and it actually j is coming. It's something that struck me at our last meeting and this meeting, and that just because of the sample, we just had too much to do at our retreat. Yeah. And so now we're here. In October. In, but we're here in, in a different way. I mean, yeah. we're we're doing some kind of brainstorming and stuff that's usually not done, right. whereas the, the retreats are definitely open to our community, but it just doesn't happen that way. Summer's a busy time, and it's usually mm -hmm. not a time when the community joins the school board. So I think it's it's actually been a pretty positive um, difference in process, and so just the, the messiness of this and last time and talking with each other, it's just... Uh, I don't know. So if that was, I think it's just uh, an example of good transparency of board operations, and yeah. maybe I don't know how to I don't know how to sum that up, but we'd want to. People are seeing us for <laughs> transparent <laughs> facilitation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if we good thing to re to you know keep in mind, as it mean, might yeah. itself be a radar list <laughs> item um, oh. in, in some ways. That's I see what you mean. So yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we do that anyways, but if we're going to remind ourselves constantly, um, it would be l yeah somewhere I on mean, their list. You're right. If you, I, okay, I see where that's, that's going. Is just to remember that we're a school board at every meeting, and if we're going to have a list of radar things <laughs> at the bottom, that that remembering that that we're a school board and making the process public right. and transparent, how exactly. we got to that list mm -hmm. of things, yeah, is, is, right. yeah, is a right. good thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. good. Should yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there? Um, I know special ed. I have that listed here. In terms of special ed, what do you? Are you? It's at the top of the, or it's on the radar list because we're not meeting the needs of our special ed kids because um, the staffing patterns for special education have been growing, or is it? I have is some there, thought. I have yeah. some thoughts or desires around that a little bit in the. 504 piece, the kids that are not IEP involved, and whether they're, it, it, you'd mentioned before that there's not enough staff to do intervention services. I think it's been brought up at the SU meeting right. September 2. Yeah. And I'm wondering what we need to do to make that, you know, is it seems like adding staff just doesn't even come doesn't to light do or something or okay w well I guess that's it maybe that's my question is why are why what what can we do <laughs> or why are we not adding staff oh we are okay yeah. <laughs> and I know that special ed, I know that there was a shortage and there and was that was yep. a crisis point this yep. year but I, as far as I know ongoing it's been I mean at least on the ground stories that I hear which is just it's a challenge in the hiring hearsay area. I yeah. suppose but the yes. you know the um, I kids that are coming in and having trouble I don't know and not being qualified for um, yes. <laughs> first first okay. direct special attention so kids that lost kids that bit. have not Qualified for special education, but still but need support. But did end up with a 504 and not <coughs> getting well, students that don't change. have the five, they have even a 504, but just maybe have a targeted plan because they need additional mm -hmm. supports that aren't at the universal level. Um, Those tier two kids. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I. 
this isn't a fully formed concept yet, but I, um, through the process of budgeting um, and just kind of knowing more and more and more about how everything is working, um, I am starting to see some um, potential structural deficiencies in the way that we do special ed in the SU. Um, and I question whether those structural deficiencies are impacting our budgeting um, and our staffing. Um, and I, I think to define the structural deficiencies, um, I think that because special ed is serviced at the SU, um, it's, it's siloed. Mm -hmm. The SU owns special ed. Um, but then special ed has to integrate with the teachers in the building and general ed. And um, it very much feels to me that things happen and it's not clear who's in charge and so those things don't happen. Um, like, like people have ideas um, and I'm not like, I've experienced this and a lot of other parents have experienced this and it just, a lot of people are feeling like nobody's in charge because two people are in charge. Um, so I will say, um, well, I haven't been here that long, but um, that model um, shifted a little bit last year with the uh, assistant, the new assistant yes. director of special ed being um, assigned to Heartland. Mm -hmm. And this year with the, um, and that person left, and this year Katie Ahern is on site frequently. Mm -hmm. She She's here doing direct supervision with yeah. our case managers. She's yeah. attending all IEP meetings this year. She's on our MTSS intensive team, so we meet weekly. We meet every Monday, and then Brittany and I have a meeting with her in addition. Um, so I, I would have agreed with that two years ago. Yeah. But I would say no. um, Heartland is getting on track. Yeah. Definitely getting yeah. on track it's with very, with that. Well, what we find, with, well, I'll speak for myself, but what yeah. I find with working with SU special, you know, the people at the SU versus yeah. our Heartland staff here, um, is it's much more collaborative, and I feel like every year it's gotten yeah. more collaborative. So maybe it's just continuing to get better. It, that's, I mean, that's the way it feels to that's me. That's the way it feels to me as like well. Like we yeah. have such a great relationship, we have yeah. no qualms about calling and asking for support, and they yeah. they trust decisions that we have to make on the ground, on the ground level, mm -hmm. and we're able to talk that through later, kind of thing. Yeah. So I, yeah, I just I feel, I feel like, like it's like collaborative. I I feel like there's a lot of communication back and forth, but um, on the like I don't feel like there's a lot of big picture looking. I think there's a lot of individual looking. Um, and that's where I think that we've got, like, I don't think we're looking big picture when we're looking at the staffing of a classroom. We're looking at the individual kids mm -hmm. in the classroom and then never looking at how that whole thing comes together. And so that's yeah. where I, I kind of some see. some of that's the special education funding piece, too, because they have, right. they have to report out and they exactly. don't get money back. So it's almost like. But uh, it creates a divide. Our kids. It, yeah, it might be, but I think yeah. it's more of a state yeah. issue than it oh, is at SU level. I yeah. agree, and it, it kind of brings us to the point of That's why right. they're passing this, new why funding. this new law yeah, passed, the and and they never we have no idea right. how it's ever going to get. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think, I right. think that that's, I'm, I'm starting to see, mm. because the, of all this individual-based yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. Mm. We're hitting everybody individually, but we're not looking at the big picture. Right. Even the big picture within a group of 20 mm. students. How are these 20 students going func to function together with all of these individual things going on? Things going on. But if we don't look at that, then we're missing a big part of how to make our classrooms function. Well, being able to use those staff members in the ways that makes the most sense. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Is the goal. Be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. If we ever get there, I mean, I mean, can I mean, we I, I, start using those practices ahead of the law if if we think that they're a good yeah. change? I mean, it's really, like, I mean, you we, really we can't, can't because, can't because of the you way you get reimbursed out, right? right. right. The, of for every minute, believe me, we try, we yeah. try. Yeah. 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 the specific student's yeah. IEP. Yep. How's the law changing? Uh, they're talking about um, a block grant. A block grant. So, just tons could potentially be used for oh, you know, 
intervention yeah. or things like that. But you know, there's complications that come down from that because the shift over from the model we're using to that right. leaves right. holes, which is why right. which I is don't think it's come down yet because right. I haven't figured there's it out. There's a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. But are we, I mean, are we feeling really confident that every kid that is mandated hours under special education is getting every hour that is written on their report at this point? Like, are we feeling like everyone's getting the service that they need? And if they're not, why? And that needs to change. Because these are like legal documents that we could be held accountable for if those right. IEPs are not being to go to the special those. Education. Yeah, I mean, I and feel like what I'm hearing from parents is that they're not. And what, and what I'm hearing from teachers is they're not. We exactly. Really <laughs> have Karen at the yeah, table. we should. And I think yeah. that if you want to delve deeper into what's happening, yeah. particularly here at Heartland, uh, Karen should be here. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. she'd be um, able to talk to you. But I think, that's a great idea. I think that that, I mean, yeah. in, in including, so going back to the radar list, which is why I brought it up, I think that, that that's part of what I'm thinking. Okay. On the that, special that, that helps me. Frame yeah. It. Yep. And so, I, like, I just feel like there's structural changes that need to be addressed um, with special yeah. education. I mean, Karen just did the service delivery plan, which yep. looks at every student's IEP and calculates all those numbers. And right. Um, yeah. So she has data, and she's planning to do her her presentation that got preempted last week at the I mean last time at the SU level at the SU board meeting because oh, there right. wasn't a quorum. So oh. she talked she had about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So <laughs> she will be present if there's you a quorum the really next Monday. I was one of the ones that didn't come. So. Um, then she but it, will present yeah. that. I think I'm really I'm interested in the data, but I'm then interested in like implementation. Yeah. Because it's one thing to say we have to have these certain hours and this is the percentage of kids and they're all getting hundred percent hours, great. But then how does it translate into the function of the running Regular of an actual ed. classroom That's and exactly it happening? Right. And those kids because getting educated. I mean I think that yes. like we are because like, hours are in doesn't necessarily mean success. I, and <laughs> you, no, yeah, and it concerns me that as we're yeah, talking about delivering services fall and we sort of stop at delivering. I mean, I know that I know you guys don't. I know you guys think about this every second of every day. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. always asking this question, but that you know the idea that we don't. It's not just that we're delivering services to kids. It's that we're we're school and we're educating them. Right. And is what we're doing working? Working. working. Yeah. And just keeping our eyes on that on that question, and that we can throw it out. We can throw out old practices if they're not working, right. and or find new practices and they meet the law. Right. And and I and I that's not I, I know that that is not that that is something you think about all the time. No, we do. We 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 and we try to you know work the system as best we can. Like it, when you just want a a screener done to give you more information on a kiddo. I mean we we can't ask a special educator to do that unless we and sometimes we. There are certain situations where I just say, we're just going to pay for it out of regular ed. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just, why is it just purely, is it just dollars and how it's funded? Like, no, so you have, see this kid, time. somebody's some struggling. Some of time. Impaired. Like, so what? It's, it's, it's because if you're servicing example, someone, yeah. how yeah. You, then you have to stop that service to do that assessment, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and it's the complicated. Staff, the, the, the special educators and the paraprofessionals are running at maximum capacity all, all the, the time, time. Yeah. and it, that's why it's where the scheduling piece comes in is because it is tight yep. there is not time for mm -hmm. you know anything else and so then when you look at some of these intervention pieces we turn to special education for some advice and things like that but you know they don't have time if they're gonna if they're gonna service the students that they already have because we have a high population of students on IEPs mm -hmm. and for special educators to work through all of their individual needs it's it's a challenge but we do try i mean i'll just say just just last week um we were planning for an evacuation drill some students that's pretty scary for them so our um trish, trish did a social story for a particular student but shared it with all the k2 teachers to use with their entire classroom because it would benefit all kids which is wonderful, and right? Certainly, yeah. Kieran Zito is it's, yeah. fantastic. We call him to consult on students that we're struggling with that are not on IEPs, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah. obviously, he has to prioritize. But he's always been very helpful and great yeah. about or responding to calls like, "Hey, I, we're know, stuck." Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this kid's really struggling. Yeah. Can you help us out, and we always, you know. So there is, 
there is some of that happening. It's just it's a time thing. But it is good to look at, it, you know, is the system yeah. working as yeah. the, the yeah. best that it can, yeah. for sure. And that's part of the look at the data yep. and yeah. being aware of that. So yep. Um, okay. okay. Sorry, okay. I didn't mean to. No, no, but I, I was just curious. I just wanted to. Yeah. I mean, I think we were all had some ideas on what was behind the special education bullet mm -hmm. to flush out what we're really talking about. Um, Okay, we moved prepared for high school into what did we call engaging, it? Engaging, preparing, variety. Okay, engaging, preparing, variety. <laughs> um, uh, big basket. I know what it means. Yeah. So, building. Physical plan. Yep. Structure. Oh, physical plan. Um, that's a good one. Uh, which doesn't change the name. Though. <laughs> it doesn't, but it should include, you know, the automation that we've talked about. Um, right, exactly. Those, all of those components yeah. go into yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll call it structural. But yeah, I mean, security's in there, too. Mm -hmm. Right. And I also, like, so outdoor classroom. Mm -hmm. That's physical plant. Physical yeah. plant. Okay. Yep. Physical plant. Okay, and then um, proficiency-based education and awesome. process. Process is sort of part of community, I think, in a sense, because what, yeah. what we're talking about is making the community part of our word work and making it. I think what Scott's our work talking about for the community is um, also making sure that we stick to our role as a board mm -hmm. um, and not um, go above and beyond, but also mm -hmm. to make sure that we meet the requirements yeah. of what we need to be doing as a board. Yeah. All yeah. Back, at, I mean, we were we've kind of come past that at the SU level, or as a as an SU in the past few months, not past it, but I still had on my mind when this radar list idea came up on was the um, the accomplishments uh, of the new uh, policy book mm -hmm. that everybody has in the district. You know, and, and that comes up with even the last few minutes of discussion about you know about about um, uh, you know keeping track of learning progress in all different areas and what our role is and so I mean ultimately there's not board members come and go and teachers come and go and leaders come and go but if we have a good framework of how the district works, how the board works, then, and the policy is a huge part of that, then we can trust that every student is, will receive what they were, are mm -hmm. supposed to receive, mm -hmm. yep. um, regardless of whether we're here or not. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, I think we have it. Diane, do you have it? I have it. You got it. Awesome. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Hey. Hey. <laughs> to three tries? Four, four months. months? <laughs> Just little bits and pieces. <laughs> it only took four months. <laughs> You're supposed to think about things and yeah. take your time and reflect. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, I actually, I'm really proud of us having that because um, while I think having these goals lists um, is useful, I, I always look at the goal and think, mm, what was that about? Mm. You know, and this is like, okay, here's a, one word. Yeah. This is a priority. Okay. Um, so, I would take a motion to go into executive session. What about agenda for next Oh, oh so thank you. you. That's the part I always... <laughs> thank you, Diane. <laughs> Superintendent's okay. report. <laughs> Superintendent's <laughs> yes, report. Yes, <laughs> <that's right>. We <laughs> know for sure that yeah. needs to be on. Um, <laughs> I had I had volunteered at one point to kind of um, help spearhead the building committee, uh -huh. and it sounds like there may be some desire for that to um, to start. So I would be happy to, if we want to talk about it at the next meeting, I'd be happy to talk about the process, what you all think for a process of choosing okay. people, and of how to how to how to start moving ahead with that. Yeah, that sounds good. And obviously, I mean, I think you you have probably. Yeah, have to be a me uh, have yeah. to be on that. <laughs> I can be, and yeah. if you want to chair it, great. But I'm happy to um, I, take something to. off your plate. If you, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have something off my plate. If you would like me to do that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would show up at the at the fourth portrait of a graduate meeting and say, 
Here's your name tags for the next for the meeting. Next <laughs> 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 the building committee. Right. Congratulations. Every person here is on the building committee. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. Good idea. Do you want to invite, um, now I'm forgetting her name, to talk Spanish. <clears throat> Karen. Um, Karen. Karen. Yeah, maybe we should. Or Katie. Katie. Is, uh, Actually, both. Katie, maybe, yeah. if possible, yeah. because Katie, Katie's just on the ground here. Yeah, no, I think often, that would be good. But Karen has the big the next year. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think yeah. that would be really good. Really good. You know. Have them both here? Yeah, if possible. Yeah, yeah. it would be great. Good. Um, who, in, who invites them? To, who gets that information then to invite them? I don't know if you want me to invite them. I can do it. Does it need to come from their supervisor or anything? If you don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. I just want to be sure that <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you can put on the that. agenda, yeah. but if no yes. one tells them, no yeah, I, I was gonna say I could. <laughs> when is our yo, next? alert them, but they might ask oh, yeah, what they're the so what to speak on. It's the 18th yes. of November, right? Well, you'll see them next week. Yes, yeah, so yeah. 18th. Yeah. And what what should we tell Karen that we just like um, accounting of? I mean, specifically, what would you like her to report on? Um. I guess kind of where we are in Heartland. Um, I, I'd like to see some numbers on our number of IUPs. Um, I'd like to see um, how she feels the staffing is here um, and where we're going with staffing. Um, and I, I kind of want to know what the big picture is for budget. Yeah. Well, the budget's at the SU level, so it's kind of... Big picture point. in our model? Sorry, I was just thinking about our um, In our delivery model? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, like, maybe she's got ideas, because what we have is not sustainable. Okay. Um, and there's... Yeah. So you'll, you'll talk to her as well? And I'll I email can. her? Well, I won't see her. I can email her. Oh, I can email her. I just thought you Okay. Might yeah, you're not there anymore. No, Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, and our next meeting is on the 18th. Would there be a lot of pushback if we moved it to 615? No. 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 Okay. Because I get off the ice in Woodstock at 530. <laughs> and get it from... Yeah. 15. Okay. Okay. So... That. When is it? What day? The 18th of November. 650. Want to just yeah. do 630? No, because I don't want to go later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some of us go to bed <laughs> early, <laughs> Scott. I just need yeah, enough time. Can you need to slide into the building maybe five minutes early. Everyone remember, bring Nikki a snack. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. It's that time of year again. Um, okay. So we have the building committee, um, we'll have a special ed update, um, we'll need to talk budgeting more seriously. I don't think we're ready to bring in um, Ed, but I think that you'll have some more numbers. I will, yeah, that's ed the plan. That mm -hmm. um, and, yep. um, I <laughs> by the 18th, yeah, I should have and more. So, I mean, building committee, November 18th, I mean, the, that proficiency, proficiency-based learning and the engagement preparation variety part. I don't, you know, I don't know what the role, yeah, is. I think that's like part of budgeting, but I think we need to know yeah. where we are before we can right. go. So that yeah, be coming down. So that would be phase two down the pike. Yeah, yeah. portrait maybe. Yeah, uh, that could be an part update. of Christine's update. Okay. Yep. Great. Um, I'll continue to do that. Is there others? I like I like having the principal's report bulleted out. I don't know if you would like that. Yeah, I like that. I, is it I like to give you a little bit of the good stuff too. What we're well, just yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> we can add a bullet, a little good teaser. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's actually not laughs> <bad>. <laughs> the feel good mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I think that those three items okay. look pretty yeah. good. Um, what else is happening? Okay. Um, it's good. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I'll continue to get updates from Craig. Just 
to keep us on track with yeah, that as well. Yeah, yep. but uh, that's exciting. I just, I just Isn't want that to say great? that's good news and yeah, congrats it everybody. Is, yeah, send Craig congrats from us. Uh, I will. He's working really hard. And he's yeah. everywhere. I mean, if you're <laughs> yeah. cooking that many more meals, my guess is the ladies are hustling. Yeah, the ladies are hustling. hustling. The ladies are hustling. Yep. He's not getting burned out, is he? Like we get it. Mm. He walks the line. You know, I <laughs> always say, Craig, what can guy. I do? He's like, I got this. I'm like, when you're ready for, when you're not getting it, please let me know. He's when great. When yeah. you need an intervention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you find yourself under your desk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let us know. Yeah. Okay. okay so um, I think that's our next agenda. Um, okay. So we do need an executive session yep. um, to talk about what Scott talked about. And then we also have some staffing discussion that we need to have. Correct. Um, so anybody want to make a motion? I'll make the motion. Can I second? Yeah. Second. Yeah, we need a second. Okay. So we'll go into executive session and then we'll come out. Okay. Um, you guys are all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Yeah. 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 I'm really excited yeah. that we have that radar list. Yeah. What? I'm yeah. excited about our radar list. No, I, I mean, it, 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 it's a, it's not an easy process to get, you know, it's kind of a yeah. hard thing to get to, but I think, I think we'll look back at that and we'll like, oh yeah, there's like, well, that really is a distillation. I was like, what do we need to, like, yeah, yeah, no, it's a good distillation of our yeah. priorities of like right. where we, where I we are. Yeah. 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 Yeah.